What's going on guys, it's Cliffy here, we are back once again, we are actually in the finals of the one day competition, we finished third so we're taking on the Warriors who finished fourth at Bloodston Arena for a chance to take on the Redbacks in the preliminary final and the winner of that will take on the New South Wales Blues. That's a lot that's going on in the head at the moment, but I'm sure that we can sort it out as things come along. But without any further ado, let's go and jump straight into this knockout game and hope that the Tassie Tigers can regis them, uh, register sorry, themselves a win. Alright, so the boys have got us off to a pretty decent platform, it must be said. 5 for 221, with just over 10 overs left to go here. We've got George Bailey in, uh, so that's good. And Jesus, that there has missed the stumps only just. I have gone and changed since the patch, and I have gone and changed the batting, so it is hopefully now similar uh, to what it was previously, but we will wait and see. That one there is way better. The timing so much better than in the first episode back. But we will take the two, get ourselves off the mark, and hopefully be in for a good innings here. What a shot that is. Full toss, dead straight down the ground. And there's the first boundary for Cliff in the innings. And we have moved on now, I think, to about seven. Eight, actually. Eight off seven, so even better. There's still ten overs to go after this. George Bailey's still in. We do still have Faulkner uh, left in the tank as well. And we can see already the timing so much better and so much more fluid than we did see in the last episode. Huge gap there at mid-wicket. It was just invited to be hit there on the pads. It's short square here at Bloodston. And we have moved on to 258. So we're doing a very decent job. We've moved on to 26 off of 18 without taking too many risks as well. There's still seven overs left to go. So we want to make sure. Um, ideally, if we're there at the end, would be bloody awesome. And uh, trying to give George Bailey as much of the strike as well as possible so that we can get this team up above 300 runs and get a very above par total. Oh, and this one here has gone down the ground. That's probably going to be four more. Western Australia's tactic of using the spinners at the end has not helped them to date here so far. And they are just getting tonked all over the place. Oh, what a shot that is. That's going to move us on to 48 as well. We have lost a few players from down the other end. We lost Bailey and then Faulkner in quick succession. We're still in there. We're going to try and bat through to the end here and nab ourselves. Hopefully a 50. And hopefully uh, the main point is that we can go and get the 300 up for the Tassie Tigers. The throw's come in. It's come to our end. But that is going to be a very well-made 50 from Cliff. On his second game back, 32 balls, strike rate of 156, 5 fours, no sixes. We have just been playing it safe, but we have been exploiting the gaps that have been available. And after Ashton Agar, two overs left to go. And uh, as I said, we're looking to try and maximise and get a 300 plus score here. Oh, what a shot that is. Back and away. It's how we got out last episode. Not so here today. David Moody's come back in for his last over. He's been pumped away through backward point for four. Oh, and this time he's gone again. Cliff, he is starting to feel it here today. Back-to-back -back boundaries and just three runs short of that 300 now. Oh, make that three in a row. This time off the back foot. David Moody, stop bowling pies outside off, mate. It is just going to be the same every single time. If you're just going to keep bowling there, mate, you are going to get the treatment. It's going to keep going back to back to back to back boundaries now. Oh, what a catch. He was just giving me nothing to work with, the spinner. I was trying to flail it away to the leg side, but we're going for a well-made 70 off of just 44 deliveries. The score we've got up over that 300, but we've got to remember this Western Australian side does have some very good batters left to come. Will it be enough? Let me know down below in the comments, but let's go and get into the bowling half of this episode. 
All right, so things haven't started that great for the Tassie Tigers. Already 54 on the board with just six overs gone. The one thing we do have in our favour is that one wicket has gone down, but it seems to be very easy picking here for old Sandpaper Bancroft and Thampy down the other end. All right, so we're coming back here for our second spell. First one was pretty uneventful. Five overs, one maiden, uh, none for 15. But as you can see... Uh, Western Australia have just been absolutely smashing it to all parts. They only need 1.33 runs per over, so you'd have to think that it is going to be over very shortly. I was going to say it'd be nice if we could go and pick up a wicket. That one there was chipped in the air from Sunder, but didn't quite get there. Just 16 required. Um, so fingers crossed that we can go and try and get one here. Because we were pretty good last episode. We did pick up three for, didn't get many with the bat. This one here is looking like it is going to be the roll reversal where we picked up 70 with the bat, and it looks as though we aren't going to go and pick up a wicket, especially unless that can be, oh, I was going to say, get the dive in on the boundary there, son. We only need, they only need 16. We've got to try and defend this. We've got to try and make our way into the one-day final, but that does not seem to be happening at any rate of knots here. But as I said, just one. One would be nice to finish things off. I guess finish off the season on a bit of a high. We did score that 70, but it looks as though it just obviously was not enough for this very strong, uh, I was going to say South Australian, but Western Australian side. That one there has been spooned out to a square leg, who we've had basically the whole rest of the game. We don't seem to have him now for some reason, but, you know, that is that is what happens. You change your field, players will go and place the ball there. So that's all right. We will take it on the chin Keep moving forward. I'm pretty sure next episode we will find out at the end of this one. But I think we are back playing some first-class cricket. As I said, it looks as though we are not going to make the one-day final, which is a real shame. Uh, but we'll get to that in just a second. All right, so we do have a little bit of hope left. Eight required. Um, there's ten overs left and still four wickets left in the bag. So we're going to have to have something quite remarkable happen here if we are going to go and get something. We do have McGrath on strike now, though, who has not faced a delivery. Um, so it'd be nice if we could go straight through him. Uh, but somehow I don't see that happening. I see him probably blocking it out or somehow, yep, working it to the leg side, trying to get one, trying to get Sundu back on strike uh, so that he can go and hit the winning runs. But uh, pretty uneventful, as I said, with the ball, which is a shame. We did have a lot of events. Uh, and once again, that has gone to that vacant square leg position, um, which is a bit frustrating because that player has just been moved out of there. But, you know, that happens. That's cricket. That's sport. And... You know, maybe next time, maybe on another day, we would have gone and got the Western Australians. But not today. They have been far too strong for us. And I'm just really hoping that this finishes off uh, quite soon, to be fair. Just because I am running out of things to say. And I'm, I'm thinking that it would have finished already by now. Um, it's going to be a dot. So just the four coming off the over. They're probably not going to hit the winning runs off us, which I guess is a bit of a plus side. But apart from that, we haven't really had a whole lot go right for us in this game, apart from with the bat. The Western Warriors have won by four wickets, as we did just see there. We got 70 off 44, and uh, Hamish McGrath was the man of the match for his three for 60, which is quite a surprise. I would have given it to Bancroft for his 102 in the chase, but not the case. So 70, we went wicketless, which was a shame, but we will be back and better, stronger than ever, in our favoured format, the first class uh, arena next time around if you guys are excited for that let me know down below in the comments if you've enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe if you're new and i'll catch you very very soon